So last week when I was doing this theorem in class, uh, my tablet PC wasn't working and so I didn't get a recording during class. But uh, this is a very important topic. I get very excited by it. And I thought I'd uh, get it on, uh, on YouTube. So the theorem is called the Intermediate Value Theorem. And like it says there at the top, it helps you in finding zeros of functions. So let me explain to you what I mean by that. So if, say, we wanted to find zeros of this function here using, say, your nbox, okay? So what you'd do is you'd put it in y1, okay? So we get x to the 5 plus x cubed minus 6x. And you'd graph that. And as you can see, there are three zeros there. And let's say we want to go find uh, this one here, okay, the very the leftmost one here. So what we do is, and I think you guys all know this, but let's go review it again. Uh, you do second calc, zero, move the cursor so it's to the left of, uh, of that point. So notice at this point, the y value is negative, okay? So we've got the left bound, hit enter. Then you want to move it to the right of that point and notice at this point the y value is positive so hit enter again and I don't want to put a guess in there so I'll hit enter <clears throat> and lo and behold it comes up with the number negative 1.414214 okay which is roughly negative uh, not roughly exactly negative root 2 so the point I'm trying to make is that this effort on your TI-84, on your graphing calculator, would be near enough impossible if this theorem did not exist. Okay, that's why I get so excited about this theorem, because it's got some real practical value. So here's the theorem, okay? So the theorem is saying that if A is less than B, and FA is not equal to FB, then F takes on every value uh, between the values of FA and FB. And remember, FA and FB are the Y values, okay? So what does this theorem really tell you, okay? Something very important. So let's say here's A. So as you can relate to your T84 work, this would be your left bound. Here's B, which would be your right bound, okay? Here's FA, and it looks like it's about negative 2. And if you look at FB, it's a little bit more than 1, so let's just say 1.1, okay, just for the sake of it. So what the theorem is saying is that if you've got a function that's continuous, first of all, okay, and you get fa is, uh, <clears throat> in this case, negative 2, and fb is 1.1, then the theorem is saying that it's going to, the function is going to take on every value between negative 2 and 1, okay? So let's just look at it on a number line, okay? So here's 0, here's negative 2, and here's, uh, about here is 1.1. So if you look at it in, that, in this picture here, the theorem is saying that the function value, the f or the y value, will be any, every value between negative 2 and 1.1. And as my diagram shows that the most important number in there is 0. So that's why this theorem helps you in finding the zeros of a polynomial because it tells you that if you can find me a bracket where the function value on the left end is say negative and on the right end is positive, I will get an x value where the function is zero. Or it could be the other way. It could be that this is positive and this is negative. Even then, guaranteed that there will be one value, at least one value of x, that's going to uh, uh, make the function value 0. And that's why it helps you in finding the zeros of a polynomial. Remember what zeros of a polynomial are, okay? So zeros of a polynomial, so let's think of a polynomial fx equals, let's say, x cubed. Um, well, let's just take a look at the example that we had, okay? Uh, so if you look at y, y equals it's x to the 5. Okay, x to the 5 plus x cubed minus 6 plus x cubed minus 6x. Okay, so zeros of a polynomial are whatever x values, when you plug it in here, makes this quantity a 0. 
Okay, in other words, the function is zero. And that is why this intermediate value theorem is so important. Okay. Right, let's take a look at some examples. If I can close this. And let's see if you have an example that we need to do. It says use the table feature of the unbox to find the bracketing region for the roots of x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus 2. Then verify by graphing the function on the unbox. Okay, so let's go in here, clear this out, put in our function x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus 2. And it's asking you to use a table feature, okay? So let's just go ahead, second table. Okay, and depending on how you set your table, okay, so if you look at my table setup, so you go second, table set, my table starts at negative 0.8 and increments by 0.1, okay, so that's the way I've just chosen this table to be, so that we get more precision, okay. So now if I go take a look at the table, and let me go snip this out, okay, you will see that between change the color on this so it can, you can see better. Um, here's a negative y value and here's a positive y value. And it's happening between the x values of negative 0.4 and negative 0.5. So it's like in this interval here, negative 0 0.5 to negative 0 0.4, okay, function is guaranteed by the IVT to have a zero. Okay, because at one point the function is negative and at the other point the function is positive. Okay, remember again what I mean by saying function is, the function is the y value, okay. So in one case it's negative 0 0.4375, in the other case it's positive 0 0.4256. So guaranteed that there's one answer that's going to be between these two x values. Well, let's go take a look at the graphing calculator and see if that is indeed the case. So let's go graph that. Okay, so it looks like it's talking about possibly this guy here. So let's go find that. So we're going to go second calc. We're going to go zero. Uh, move the cursor to the left. And here the, the y value is negative. Hit enter. Move the cursor over. To see that the y value is positive. Hit enter. Hit enter. And there is your answer. Okay, negative. Uh, okay, let's see what it was. Uh, negative uh, zero four. Uh, negative 0 0.4519, okay? So, negative 0 0.4519, which is indeed between these two numbers here, okay? So, you can see the power of the IVT, okay? It's really, uh, really powerful tool. So, I hope you view this and uh, you get more out of it than uh, when I was doing this in class, okay? Bye.